Hello everyone. Anyone else remember this? There were a lot of these educational PC programs when I was growing up, but this one in particular was a huge part of my childhood and probably single-handedly responsible for my fascination with wildlife today. In fact, it means so much to me that I've converted it into a PowerPoint presentation, which I've shown to a few of the people closest to me. And now I've decided to make a video version and upload it to YouTube, share it with everyone. It's going to require a bit of an explanation first, though, so just bear with me while I explain how this works. So this is a typical screen from Dangerous Creatures. Each of the red links on the main page opens up a subscreen. For example, every subscreen has a narration caption that plays when the screen is opened. I've chosen one subscreen for each animal, and I'll be reciting its accompanying narration caption. On every page, one subscreen, sometimes two, contains a video, easily identified by this symbol. I've also inserted all the videos into this presentation. And trust me, you don't even want to know what a hassle it was to find where the videos were stored on the disc. Note that the video isn't always about the animal in question. Every page also has a fact screen, which, as you can see, gives you key statistics about the animal, a map of where it lives in the world, and offers some free advice for how to behave around it. The advice is narrated, and I'll be enacting that as well. Also, when the fact screen is opened, it plays the sound that the animal makes. All those sounds are included here too. The last thing to mention is the next button. Every main page and subscreen has one of these, which, when clicked, takes you to another screen in the program. A caption of narration is played first to explain the link, which of course I've also included for every article. Every main screen leads to another, which can sometimes result in long chains of connected screens. I've decided to keep those chains intact, ending each when we get to a screen that either leads to one that we've covered already, or one that I think fits better in another chain. Each chain begins with a screen that no other main page links to. Not every screen is about a specific animal. Some of them are about groups of animals or a certain topic of animal behavior. So the format that every slide will follow is title, name of animal or topic, map, if it's an animal, sound, again, if it's an animal, advice, chosen subscreen, video, and next. And that's all there is to it. Now let's begin, as the example implied, with the grizzly bear, which can be found in northwest North America. And according to dangerous creatures anyway, it makes this sound. <laughs> now the advice on its fact screen in the program says, Don't stare at a grizzly. That's a challenge in bear language. Speak softly and back away. If it attacks and you don't faint of fright right away, Play dead, and the bear may leave you alone. Now for the narration caption accompanying the one subscreen I've chosen. Black bears and grizzlies live in the same areas. The black bear, which sometimes looks brown, doesn't have a hump. Now let's take a look at the video on its page. During the salmon season, grizzly bears meet at their local fishing hole. Some arguments can always be expected about who gets the best fishing spot. But there are usually enough fish for every bear to get a share. And finally, its next button says... Grizzly bears are gigantic, but their newborn cubs could fit into a shoebox. Aren't animal babies interesting? Beautiful babies. You may feel that you can't help wanting to touch a baby animal, but remember that it's wild and it can't know what's going on in your mind, and more important, its mother is probably nearby. You were born looking like your parents, but that's not the case with all creatures. Play has a serious side. It helps develop skills that wild animals will need as adults. Of course, the babies don't know that. To them, it's just plain fun.
You may be tempted to pet a baby wild animal, but don't. Its family is probably close by and is probably very protective. Family values. As a child, your mother probably goes to the grocery store to get food for you. But if you came from a family of wild predators, your mother would have to hunt and kill before she could bring home the dinner. Some animals are born with all the knowledge they need to survive. But mammals need to listen closely to their mother's advice. The instincts of all animals direct them toward the same goal. To reproduce and pass their genes along to the next generation. By the way, I swear it's just a coincidence that all the pictures we've looked at so far have been of bears. Now we're finally going to see something different. The need to reproduce and protect their young are two of the driving forces behind animal behavior. Even scorpions are protective parents. Scorpion, which lives in deserts, savannas, tropical and subtropical regions worldwide. If you're camping out in scorpion country, shake your boots out when you get up in the morning. I once put my foot into my boot without looking and got a nasty sting. However, at least I survived the experience. The scorpion did not. When the sun goes down, the scorpions come out. That's when all insects, spiders and other scorpions had better watch out. On the desert floor, the battle is about to begin. Scorpion and Tarantula are in position. In a pushing match, either might win. But the Scorpion can also sting. The venom of most Scorpions won't kill you, but the sting will certainly hurt. Coming into contact with any venom producer is bound to be a painful experience. Venom Producers Imagine being able to manufacture venom in your own body. That's a remarkable talent. We humans only produce... Uh, well, you know... Sweat, saliva, nothing worth discussing. You thought all snakes had fangs up front? Open wide! Unlike a constrictor, a venomous snake doesn't need to squeeze its prey. With one bite, it injects its venom. Then, it waits for the victim to stop moving. An animal doesn't need fangs to use venom. A poison arrow frog, for example, can simply ooze it out through its skin. Poison arrow frog, which lives in Central and South America. <coughs> Don't even think of touching a brilliantly coloured tree frog. It's likely to be highly toxic. Just admire the bright colours from a distance. I always use binoculars myself. One can't be too careful. You might expect to find frogs in bogs or ponds or swamps, but how about frogs in trees? Poison arrow frogs live in the trees of the rainforest. When you're a tiny frog, it's a good defense to be poisonous. If you're a tiny frog, you'd better have a good defense against predators, like venom. You need some way of fighting back. Fighting back. Now, as you've no doubt realized, I'm not actually showing the screens from the program itself, but pictures I found on a Google image search. When we get to the video, you'll understand why I chose a picture of this animal in particular. 
This was before I figured out how to insert the videos. If other animals wanted to eat you, you'd have to develop some very good defenses to survive. I've become very good at hiding myself. A bunch of spines will scare off most predators. It certainly works for lionfish, porcupines, and passion vine caterpillars. A surprise can be a good defense. This skunk does a handstand and threatens to shower the jaguar with its acrid spray. It's enough to make the big cat back off. In the program, this leads to an activity called camouflage. Animals use many tricks to try to avoid predators. Camouflage is one of them. Well, that's it for now. Camouflage leads to a screen that'll come up in another chain. You can sort of think of this first one as a sample, a taster, if you will. Check in for part two, where we'll jump right into the longest sequence of main screens in the whole program. And it just happens to begin with the deadliest creature of them all.